All esteem to the Most High Elohim, all praise to the Ancient of Days. This is your brother L. Blood and love. We're going to go through the scripture today and we're going to see truly what the importance is of blood and love. A lot of times we hear so much of, especially in Christianity, where people talking about the blood of the Messiah, the blood of the Messiah. I plead the blood, things of that nature. And even when we come into the knowledge of truth, we see a lot of these laws and commands pertaining to blood. Uh, a lot of times we just skim over these things. We truly don't understand the depth of these things. What I want to do today is speak about these things as it pertains to blood and love. A very important scripture that we need to have at the forefront of our mind. Uh, found in the book of Revelation. Let's go there real quick because this is one scripture that will truly help us begin to understand the importance of blood and love. Let's go to Revelation chapter 12, beginning at verse 10. It says, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our Elohim and the power of his Messiah. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our Elohim day and night. Verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto the death. So the scripture here says that the remnant, the righteous, they will overcome the beast. They will overcome the adversary. They will overcome the oppressor by the blood of the lamb. What is it so powerful about that blood that causes the remnant to overcome? Once again, sometimes we skim right over these things and we truly don't go more in depth on the power of the blood and why the blood is so powerful. And we hear people say, you know, I plead the blood, I plead the blood when we don't even really know what that is or how to do that. So we're going to go into some more scriptures today about blood and love. And I'm going to show you here how the two are inseparable. Blood and love is inseparable. Now, before we start talking about why the blood of the Messiah is so powerful, the blood of the lamb, let's simply start with the best example we can start with, which is ourselves of why our blood is so important. I'm going to give you some scripture examples. Then I'm going to give you some real life examples. First, let's go to the book of Jasher. Let's go to the book of Jasher, chapter 76. We're going to start at verse 26. Listen to what it says here. For the Most High had hearkened to the prayer of his people, the children of Israel, and their cry reached him on account of their hard work. Still his anger did not turn from them, and the hand of Pharaoh was still stretched out against the children of Israel. And Pharaoh hardened his neck before the Most High, and he increased his yoke over the children of Israel, and embittered their lives with all manner of hard work. Of course, this was at the time when our people were being oppressed in Egypt. Now, I'm going to go to the verses here that have to do with the uh, power of the blood of the Hebrews. Verse 28. And when the Most High had inflicted the plague upon Pharaoh, king of Egypt, he asked his wise men and sorcerers to cure him. And his wise men and sorcerers said unto him that if the blood of little children were put into the wounds, he would be healed. Pharaoh was sick and plagued and his sorcerers, his advisors, they told him that the blood of Hebrew children would heal him. Isn't that interesting? Now we begin to understand why the human trafficking epidemic and the organ trafficking epidemic is what it is today. Even till today, there are wicked people in high places who desire the blood of Hebrew boys and girls, Hebrew men and women. Whenever we look at the case of the sister Henrietta Lacks, how her blood was taken and many of her cells have been used in stem cell research curing all sorts of cancers, creating all sorts of medicines, and her cells are still alive to this day. So in the ancient world and also in the modern world, science, the wicked, and our enemy, they understand even the power that is within the blood of regular old sinful uh, 
Hebrews. So if our blood is that powerful, our DNA, how much more powerful do you think the blood of the Messiah is? I'm bringing this out to give you a few examples of why that blood is so important, so sacred, so powerful. And here in a moment, we're going to get into why the blood and the love is inseparable. But again, Pharaoh's sorcerers were telling him that the blood of Hebrew children would heal, would heal him. So what is it they know about the blood of our people that even our people don't know about their own blood? Let's continue to research. Verse 30, it says, and Pharaoh hearkened to them and sent his ministers to Goshen to the children of Israel to take their little children. And Pharaoh's ministers went and took the infants of the children of Israel from the bosoms of their mothers by force. And they brought them to Pharaoh daily, a child each day. And the physicians killed them and applied them to the plague. Thus they did all the days. And the number of the children which Pharaoh slew was 375. So they were stealing and kidnapping our children, human trafficking and organ trafficking our children for their blood. Once again, let us know that the blood of our people must have a power that we don't even know about. And if we as sinful fallen human beings, if that blood means a lot, imagine how much the blood of the Messiah, the blood of the lamb, a sinless human being. Imagine how powerful his blood is. Now, let's continue studying about this blood and love. Let's think about the creation of our forefather, Adam. The scripture talks about how Adam was formed from the dust of the earth. Of course, we know that. What's interesting is that throughout all of the text where we read about the creation of Adam, nowhere do you see where his blood was created. It just says that he was formed from dust. And whenever the Most High breathed the breath of life, into our forefather, Adam, that's when the blood began to flow through his veins. Hallelujah. That's also why the Ruach, the spirit and the blood are inseparable as well. Because only when the most high breathed into Adam, did the blood begin to flow. All praise. Are you getting that picture? As soon, whenever Adam was laying there as a clump of clay, with no life in it. It's only when the Most High breathed into him the breath of life is when the blood begins to flow. We know that this is true because whenever a body dies, whenever there's no more breath in the body, the breath and the soul leaves the body, the blood becomes real uh, clay-like. The blood turns black. This is a fact. Anybody that does autopsies, anybody that understands that, you know, that blood that has been sitting, it coagulates. It becomes black, like the same mud that Adam was formed from, like the same dirt that he was formed from. That's what blood becomes whenever it the, there, there's no life, there's no breath to give life to that blood. So Adam, the blood began to flow through his veins whenever the Most High breathed into him the breath of life. Blood and love is inseparable and the spirit and blood is inseparable as well. This is why the scripture tells us in 1 John chapter 5, verse 8, it says, And there are three that bear witness in earth, the spirit and the water and the blood. These three agree in one. Hallelujah. Because when we look at the beginning of creation, we see the main things that are mentioned was the waters because the spirit of the most high hovered above the waters and the most high breathed into Adam. He breathed into that clay. He breathed into him his spirit. And when he did that, the water that was inside Adam and the spirit connected. And that's when the blood of Adam began to flow. And he became a living being. This is why blood and love are inseparable family. Because the most high breathed into us of his spirit out of love. We became a living creation out of love. And the blood was created whenever the most high breathed his spirit into us 
out of his love for us. Blood and love are inseparable because love is what created blood. The love of the most high to create us made us become a living being with our blood flowing. All praise. And let's also look at it from another angle here as it pertains to blood and love. Whenever you love somebody, you will shed your own blood for them. You will shed other people's blood for them and you will live for them. Let's go through this again. Whenever you truly love somebody, you will kill for them and shed blood for them. You will die for them, allowing your own blood to be shed for them. And you will also live for them. Those are the three ways that you let somebody know that you love them. And all three of those ways involve blood. How do we know that the Messiah loves, loved and loves us? Because of blood. How? Because of blood. Let's go to Revelation and talk about all the blood that he's going to spill for us. Because scripture says that we are his wife, right? Let's see what the Messiah is going to do for his bride. Let's see if he's going to shed any blood for his bride. Let's go to Revelation chapter 14, beginning at verse 19. It says, and the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of the most high. And the winepress was trodden without the city and blood came out of the winepress, even unto the horse bridles by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. The scripture there is saying that when the wrath of the most high and the wrath of the Messiah comes, that the blood of his enemies would flow all the way up to a horse's mouth. That is equivalent to being up to a man's chest. The Messiah is going to be chest deep in the blood of his enemies. Why? Because he loves his bride. He loves his people to the point where he would shed blood for them. That's the first way that you let somebody know that you love them, that you would kill for them. I'm not talking about the kill of thou shall not kill. I'm not talking about killing unrighteously. I'm talking about lawful killing. I'm talking about in righteousness and in judgment. The Messiah is going to kill for us. That's how we know that he loves us. Most high forbid that any of you ever be in a situation like the one I'm about to talk about. But we went through the scriptures earlier about how they were kidnapping the Hebrew children to get their blood. If you as a parent were out somewhere at the grocery store, uh, movie theater or wherever you are and some sex traffickers try to run up and kidnap your child right there while you there and just snatch your child out of your arms and you had a pistol, a knife or any weapon on you. The way that you would show that you love your child is because you would spill the blood of those sex traffickers. Would you not? Would you not spill the blood of the human traffickers out of love for your child? That would be one way to show your child that you love them, that you would either kill them human traffickers or you would beat them bloody enough to where they, they couldn't be able to human traffic nobody else. That's how you would let your child know that you love them because you would shed the blood of somebody trying to bring harm to them. How do you think the Messiah feels? How do you think the Most High feels about his people? He loves us, so he would kill for us. Remember what I said, as it pertains to blood and love, three ways that you show people that you love them through blood is that you would kill for them and shed blood for them. You would die for them and shed your own blood for them, or you would use all of your life and blood to live for them meaning live to take care of them. A lot of times, whenever we talk about love, we talk about you have to be ready to kill or die for somebody. But the greatest act of love that you can do is to live for somebody, to sacrifice for them, for all of your thoughts and actions and deeds to be about loving them, taking care of them as a father, being there for your children, 
Any man can say that he would kill and die for his children, but with all the Negroes abandoning their families, we, we don't need brothers that would just kill and die for their family. We need brothers that would live for their family. Stay alive for your family. Making wise and righteous decisions so that your life would be prolonged. Hallelujah. Same thing for children. Honor your mother and father that what? That your days may be prolonged. It takes a lot more to live for somebody than it does to die or kill for them. It's nothing to pull a trigger to shed blood for love. It's nothing to be a martyr and die for love. But as it says in 1 Corinthians where it talks about love, the hardest thing to do is to live for love. And that takes blood. It takes blood and sacrifice to live for love, to stay alive for the people that you love, to be there for the people that you say you love. That is the ultimate sacrifice, to live for love. Not saying that if opportunity presents, we shouldn't kill or die for love. But in this walk of endurance, we need to more be focused on being empowered to live for love. But I don't want to digress too much. Let's go back to Revelation 19, 11. We talking about how the Messiah is going to shed blood for us. Blood and love are inseparable family. Wherever there's love, there's blood. Revelation 19, 11. I'm just going through these scriptures to edify us on the importance of the blood and what it truly means. It says, and I saw heaven opened and behold a white horse and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness, he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew, but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the word of the most high. Here again, we see the Messiah and blood. His very garment is dipped in blood, the blood of his enemies, the, his own blood as well, representing the blood he was willing to shed to be a martyr. And there are many of the remnant who will also meet that same fate as martyrdom to shed their own blood for love, to die for the Most High and the Messiah, to shed their blood. And one thing we know about the Most High is that that blood will be avenged. Because what did he say about Abel whenever Cain killed Abel? He said, the blood of your brother cries out to me. Some of us will shed our blood as martyrs and some of us will be used as that person that it talks about in Torah, who was the avenger of blood to avenge the innocent blood that has been shed of our people. So some of us will be those martyrs that spill our own blood. Some of us will be those avengers of blood who avenge the blood of our people shed like Maccabees and them did. And some of us will be those who live and use our sweat, tears and blood to live for the most high in obedience. Let's go to a scripture here that's in Torah. Let's go to Numbers chapter 35, starting at verse 33. It says, so ye shall not pollute the land wherein ye are for blood. It defile of the land and the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, but by the blood of him that shed it. Scripture here is saying that whenever innocent blood is shed, that the only way to cleanse that land is by the blood of those who shed the innocent blood. So this lets us know that all these uh, white folks talking about we sorry for slavery and we sorry for uh, killing and all that. Look, that's not going to be enough to satisfy all the innocent blood that's been shed. The only way to even the score is for their blood to be shed. I'm just reading you what's in scripture. It says the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, but by the blood of him that shed it. So all these little weak apologies, all these little uh, let's just have breakfast and let's agree to disagree and let's talk this out. 
all these little weak I'm sorry's and all that, that's not going to even up the innocent blood that's been shed of our people. Their blood is going to have to be shed because it's only by the blood and the blood of the grandchildren and great grandchildren of those who shed our blood. It's only by their blood also being shed that evens things out. So I don't want to hear no weak apologies. I don't want to uh, hear about the l let's have a race relations banquet and all that. Nah, some blood got to get shed, period. What did the brother Malcolm say? There's no such thing as all, all revolutions have been bloody. And I just got done reading you in the scripture here how the Messiah is going to be chest deep in blood. Blood and love are inseparable. The spirit that was breathed into us, our forefather Adam, it made him a living being. As soon as the spirit was breathed into him, boom, the blood started flowing. Hallelujah. Let's go to another scripture where the Most High talks about that the life is in the blood. Let's go to Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11. It says, for the life of the flesh is in the blood and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. Hallelujah. All praise to the most high. And something that's very interesting is in the street culture, the blood gang, they'll often call other bloods Damu. Damu. They'll call other bloods Damu. And the Hebrew word for blood, guess what it is? It's Dam. Dam. That sounds a lot like Damu. Now you see where a lot of these things come from. You can start putting the pieces together here as we talk about this. So the Messiah, he was He's ready to kill for us and shed blood for us. That's one way we know that he loves us because he's willing to be chest deep in the blood of our enemies. Let's go to another scripture here where another brother had that same zeal to shed blood for the truth and for the most high. Let's read this. Let's go to Numbers chapter 25, beginning at verse five. This was at a time when our people were rebelling against the Most High by uniting with the uh, Midianitish women at Baal Peor. Let's see what took place here. It says, And Moses said unto the judges of Israel, Slay ye every one his men that were joined unto Baal Peor. And behold, one of the children of Israel came and brought unto his brethren a Midianitish woman in the sight of Moses and in the sight of all the congregation of the children of Israel who were weeping before the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And when Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, saw it, he rose up from among the congregation and took a javelin in his hand. And he went after the man of Israel into the tent and thrust both of them through the man of Israel and the woman through her belly. So the plague was stayed from the children of Israel. So this man, Eleazar, rose up and out of love for the law of the Most High, out of love for the father, he shed the blood of that wicked Israelite and the strange woman that the wicked Israelite was having sex with right in the middle of it. Now, let's see if the Most High was mad at him for doing that, or let's see if the Most High approved of him shedding that blood for the love he had for the Father. Verse 10, And the Most High spake unto Moses, saying, For Nahaz, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron the priest, have turned my wrath away from the children of Israel, while he was zealous for my sake among them, that I consume not the children of Israel in my jealousy. Wherefore say, Behold, I give unto him my covenant of peace, and he shall have it, and his seed after him, even the covenant of an everlasting priesthood, because he was zealous for his Elohim, and made an atonement for the children of Israel. Hallelujah. Would you take a look at that? So the Most High was not mad at that brother for shedding that blood out of his love for the father. Once again, it goes back to what I said at the beginning of the discussion. The three ways that we let somebody know that our love is real 
all have to do with blood. We will either die and allow our own blood to be shed for them, to be a martyr for them. We will kill for them and shed the blood of anybody hurting them for them. Or we will live for them and sacrifice ourself and our time and our life for them. Those are the three ways you let somebody know that you love them. You'll either kill for them, die for them, or live for them. I'm hoping that going through these verses is helping you understand why the blood is so powerful. It's not necessarily the blood itself, but it's what the blood means. Hallelujah. It's what the blood means. Now, are you beginning to see why the blood of the lamb is so powerful? Because he died for us. He killed for kills for us and he lived for us. He met all three requirements of what it truly means for blood and love. Let's go to some other scriptures. Let's go to the book of first Maccabees chapter six. And we're going to read about another brother who ironically, his name was Eleazar. Similar to the Eleazar we just read about in Numbers 25, who killed for the love of the Most High. We're going to read about another Eleazar who was willing to be a martyr. Hallelujah. Here's what it says. Then Judas and his army advanced to battle and 600 men from the king's army fell. And Eleazar Ivaron, this was one of Judah Maccabee's brothers. He saw that one of the animals was armed with royal armor and stood higher than all the other animals. And he thought that the king was on it. Listen to this. And he gave his life to save his people. Let me read this again. And he gave his life to save his people another time. And he gave his life to save his people one more time. And he gave his life to save his people and win everlasting renown for himself. It must be something about that name Eleazar because numbers 25, we had a brother named Eleazar that killed for the love of the most high. Here in 1 Maccabees chapter 6, verse 42 through 47, we have another brother named Eleazar that was ready to die for the Most High and shed his own blood. It says, and he gave his life to save his people and win everlasting renown for himself. For he ran boldly up to it in the midst of the phalanx, saying, slaying to right and left. And they opened before him on this side and on that. And he slipped under the elephant and stabbed it underneath and killed it. And it fell to the earth upon him and he died there. So this brother, Eleazar Avarum, he saw that the elephant was charging through the armies of the uh, Israelites. And he said, I'm going to have to kill this thing, even if it means me dying. Hallelujah. So he charged all the way through there. He charged through there. Killed the elephant and the elephant fell on him. And he shed his own blood as a martyr for his people. He gave his life to save his people. And the scripture says that he won everlasting renown for himself as a martyr because he was willing to shed his own blood. Let's see what the Messiah had to say about that same martyr spirit of shedding your own blood for your people. Let's go to John chapter 15. I'm going to read all these verses. The Messiah said because it's so powerful. He says, I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my father glorified that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. Listen to this, because remember what I said, blood and love are inseparable. It says, 
As the Father have loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment that ye love one another as I has loved you. Hallelujah. Blood and love is inseparable. Verse 13, he says, greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man do what? Shed his own blood and give his life for his friends. That's what the Messiah did for us. It's no different than that parent who loves their children. Doing what they need to do to protect them, whether it's killing and shedding the blood of the kidnapper, trying to come kidnap their child, whether it's them giving their blood to live for their child, meaning getting up to go to work every day, earning money to pay the bills, to pay for the child's doctor bills, pay for the child's food, to put clothes on the child's back. That's another way of giving your blood for somebody you love. Because you are given of your energy and sweat equity. You are living to make sure that they too can live. Hallelujah. Blood and love are inseparable family. It really truly is. Check this out. At the beginning of the discussion, we talked about Adam. And we talked about the things that were a part of Adam's creation was that the father breathed into him the breath of life and that the water was inside Adam in the creation. There was the spirit. There was the water. And when the most high breathed into Adam, that's when his blood began to flow. Now, what I want to do is take a look at John 19, beginning at verse 33. And we're going to see that those same things were present. The same things that were present in the creation of Adam were also present Whenever the Messiah did what he did for us. Hallelujah. John chapter 19, verse 30, it says, when the Messiah therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. I remember whenever my grandmother died, her, her last thing was she took a deep breath, like <sighs> one last deep breath. And she was gone. Now think about that in reverse. The most high put a deep breath and breathed into Adam. <sighs> breathed into him. And then his blood began to flow. Now. Let's go to verse 33. It says, but when they came to the Messiah and saw that he was dead already, they break not his legs. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side and forthwith came there out. What? Blood and water. The same thing that was mixed into Adam whenever he was created. The Most High breathed into Adam that dust and clay with the water in it. And whenever he did that, boom. Adam's blood began to flow and he became a living soul and a living being. So we see whether it was the creation of Adam or whether it was the death and resurrection of Hamashiach. One thing that we always see in the midst of all that is blood. Blood. This is the power of the blood family. The power of the blood, meaning that you will live for the most high, that you will die for the most high. And if need be, kill for the most high in righteousness. We're not talking about murder. We're talking about in righteousness. Those are the three ways that we know we love the most high. Those are the three ways that we know the most high loves us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What's very interesting, family, is that the angels do not have blood. This is what this is how you know that it's something special because not even the angels have blood. But we as the most High's creations that he breathed the breath of life into. We have 
blood. The Most High's angels, the scripture says they were created from fire. They were formed out of fire. They weren't created in the same manner as we were with the Most High breathing his breath of life into them. They were formed by fire. We were formed by the Father breathing his very essence into us, which makes us flow with blood. Blood and love is inseparable family. Are you beginning to see this? Are you beginning to now see why we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony? We overcome by the blood because we must be that people that will live for love of the most high. We must be that people that would die for love of the most high. We must be that people that will kill for love of the most high if need be. Hallelujah. Exodus chapter 24, starting at verse seven. And Moses took the book of the covenant and read in the audience of the people. And they said, all that the most high have said, we will do and be obedient. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and behead and said, behold, the blood of the covenant, which the most high have made with you concerning all these words. You know, what's powerful about that family is in the mafia. Whenever somebody becomes a made man, they slice their hand and they do this in the Japanese mafia as well as the Italian mafia. They slice their hand and cut it open so that it bleeds. And all the other made men and the dons and the leaders of the families, they slice their hand as well. And the new initiate, they walk up and they shake everybody's hand in blood. And what that represents is a covenant and an oath that they are entering into of becoming a made man to be a part of that family and to have loyalty and honor and to follow the code of that family. Why? Because they've taken that action of shaking hands in blood. They slice their very hand. All, all, all the leaders of that family slice their hand and they shake the hand of the new initiate in blood. And that represents the covenant, the contract. That represents the lifelong allegiance that they have to that family. What do you think takes place whenever we enter into covenant with the Most High and the Messiah? We don't have to slit our hand and shake his hand in blood. But whenever you go to those waters of baptism, it's, it's the exact same thing. It's like you've, you're shaking hands in blood with the Messiah. You are looking him in his eyes and saying, I love you. I will live for you. I will kill for you. I will die for you. We are one just as you and your father are one. That's what takes place whenever you go to those waters of baptism. You are shaking hands in blood with the Messiah and with the most high. This is no light matter. It's not nothing to be played with. Because in the mafia, if you break that oath, if you break that brotherhood, if you break loyalty with the family, You already know you will be killed. And what does the Messiah say? Those who turn their backs on him, it would be better that they were never born. Once you shake hands in blood with the Messiah, if you become double minded and a hypocrite, and if you become of those who go away into perdition, it would be better for you that you were never born. Or as Peter said, it would be better for you that you had never known the way of the most high. If you put your hand to the plow, if you put your hand on the pistol, if you put your hand on the sword and you look back, you might as well fall on your sword because it would be better for you that you've never been born than to shake hands in blood with the king of the universe and then betray him. Are you starting to see this? Even in the gangs, they say blood in, blood out. Damu. Well, the Messiah shed his damu. He shed his blood. And his kingdom is about us shaking hands in blood with him. Whenever we go into the waters of baptism. 
saying that we are going to walk in newness of life. What you've just done is shake hands in blood with the Messiah. And he said that those who turn their back on him, he said that they will be cut in half and given their portion with the hypocrites. Do you want that to be you? Then you have to take it serious. This walk that you've shaken hands in blood with the Messiah. You are now part of this family. This is our thing. La Costa Nostra. Or as the scripture says, they overcame by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto the death. Be faithful unto death and I will give you the crown of life. Behold, you shall have tribulation. They shall deliver you up to be killed. They shall lynch you. They shall do police brutality against you. But blood in, blood out. The scripture says you have not yet resisted unto blood. What does that mean? It means that we need to be willing to die, kill and live for the most high and this truth. In the book of Sirach, Ecclesiasticus, it says, contend for the truth to the death and the most high will fight for you. And guess what? Whenever you put your blood on the line for love, because remember, blood and love is inseparable. Whenever you put your blood on the line, the most high will judge your enemies in blood. Hallelujah. Because we know that our enemies are going to be judged by blood. Revelation chapter 16, verse three. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea and it became as the blood of a dead man and every living soul died in the sea. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters and they became blood. And I heard the angel of the waters say, thou art righteous most high, which are, was, and shall be because thou hast judged us. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets and thou hast given them blood to drink for they are worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I heard another out of the altar say, even so most high almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. So our enemies are going to be judged with blood. Why? Because they have been drunk with the blood of the righteous. Revelation 17, 5. And upon the forehead of the whore was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of the Messiah. So these Europeans have been drunk with our blood. These Indians have been drunk with our blood. These Arabs have been drunk with our blood. Revelation 18, 24. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. Just like the blood of righteous Abel cried out to the most high. The blood of Hebrew slaves, the blood of Hebrew men, women, and children cries out. And the Most High is going to judge them by blood. Revelation 19, 2. For true and righteous are his judgments. For he have judged the great whore, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. Hallelujah. We are the witnesses of the Most High. We are his blood witnesses. And what does it say about the two witnesses? Revelation eleven six. These have power to shut heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy and have power over waters to do what? To turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. Our enemies will be judged by blood, family. All praise to the most high for that. That's how we know, family, that the blood and the love is inseparable. Blood and love is inseparable. So what we need to do today is remember the sacredness of the blood of the lamb. We need to remember the sacredness of the blood of our ancestors. And finally, you need to remember the sacredness of your own blood that right now, as I speak, is flowing through your veins and my veins. 
We need to remember the sacredness of the blood. Not doing no blood sacrifices like the wicked do. Trying to get power from the enemy like the priest of Baal who were cutting themselves in the days of Elijah. Cutting themselves and doing all these weird rituals. We don't have to do no weird, strange blood rituals. All we need to do is live for the Most High and the Messiah. Be ready to die for the Most High and the Messiah. Be ready to kill for the Most High and the Messiah. That's all we need to do as it pertains to blood. All we need to do is walk in that love, that blood love. You see our enemies, they have a blood lust. They want to murder. They want to steal. They want to do anything that causes the shedding of innocent blood. They have a blood lust. But we as the remnant and people of the Most High, we have a blood love. Hallelujah. We love that covenant blood. We love that blood of the lamb. We love it so much that it is our word. It is our testimony. That's how we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Being willing to die, kill and live for the covenant of the blood. Damu. Hallelujah. All praise to the father. I pray that this discussion has helped somebody. I pray that this discussion has opened some eyes. I pray that this discussion has helped brothers and sisters understand the power of the blood of the lamb and the power of the blood of your people. And I hope it has given you an inspiration to be an avenger of that blood. Hallelujah. All praise to the most high. May we continue on and endure to the end with victory, success and destiny. Before I go, I want to make brothers and sisters aware of some of the works of the ministry that we've done. Some great projects that have helped many brothers and sisters. We have the 613 Laws of Torah audiobook. This is a five hour long audiobook narrated by myself. It contains all 613 Laws of Torah. It's narrated from the King James Version. We don't use any of the pagan names. In the audiobook, there's no other extra distractions or commentary. It's strictly and only the unfiltered laws and commands of the Most High. We put together this audio book because the scripture commands us in Joshua chapter one, verse seven and eight to meditate on the laws and commands every night and day, every day and night. We live in a time where people are constantly on the go. So we put the laws and commands in audio book form so that you can download the audio book to your phone, your tablet, your laptop, your desktop. You can listen to the laws and commands while you on the go, while you in the car, while you at work, while you in the gym working out, while you in the kitchen cooking, wherever you at, whatever you doing, you can have the laws and commands playing in the background. And by listening to the laws and commands over and over with repetition, it causes those laws and commands to be written on your heart. Hallelujah. Making you better able to be desirous of the Most High's obedience and to live out those laws and commands on a daily basis. All praise. So for those who are interested in investing in that project and downloading it, I will put a link in the description box underneath this video that will show you how you can download and invest in that project. Once again, it's a five hour long audio book, the 613 Laws of Torah audio book narrated by myself, Brother L. Another audio book we've done is the Words of the Messiah audio book. That's a four hour long audio book, also narrated by myself. It contains all of the laws. In, I mean, it contains all the words of the Messiah recorded in scripture. We put together that audio book because, of course, the Messiah is the Torah in the flesh. He's the word made flesh. He's that man that we know loves us because he kills for us. He died for us and he lives for us. Hallelujah. So we put together an audio book with the Messiah's words so brothers and sisters can meditate on the words of the Messiah and follow in his footsteps because he never, ever broke his father's law. By following in his footsteps and listening to his words, we learn more how to worship the Most High in spirit and in truth. All praise. So for brothers and sisters interested in investing in that audio book, I'll put a link in the description box underneath this video so you can download and invest in that words of the Messiah audio book. Another audio book we've done is the Words of the Most High Father audio book. This is a 14 hour long audio book and it contains the words of the Most High recorded in scripture out of his own mouth and through the inspiration of the prophets all the way from the book of Genesis where he said, let there be light all the way to the New Testament where he looked at the Messiah and said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. 
14 hours of content. We put together that audio book because the scripture says that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the father does man live. So we literally put together an audio book with only the words of the father. I'll put a link in the description box. So brothers and sisters interested in investing in that project and downloading that audio book, you can do so. Just check out the description box. All the links will be in there. Another movement that we launched with the ministry is the Hebrews for Excellence and Exodus campaign. This was a campaign that was started by the ministry in January of this year. And this movement is to strive to fulfill what is written in scripture, that this truth must be preached to all four corners of the earth. This truth must be preached to all four corners of the earth because the scripture says that our people, the true children of Israel, have been dispersed to all four corners of the earth. So with the Hebrews for Excellence and Exodus campaign, we are traveling from city to city, town to town, all over the United States and all over the world to preach, to teach, to baptize, to visit the jails, the prisons, the orphanages, the children's homes, the hospitals, everywhere where our people are at, to baptize, to do the work of the Father, to lay hands on the sick, to cast out demons and do the work of the Messiah and the apostles. Since launching the movement in January, we've already been as far west in the U.S. as San Diego, California, to as far east as Jamestown, Virginia. We've been on both coasts, to the very edge of both coasts, and many places in between like Louisiana, Illinois, uh, Georgia, um, Tennessee, all these different places. Whenever we go to these places, we baptize, we preach, we teach. We also have meetings with brothers and sisters to discuss uh, other things such as homeschooling, home fellowship, home business. Those are three things that are truly helping our people become self-sufficient, self-contained and self-defended in these last and wicked times. With the Hebrews for Excellence and Exodus campaign, we are also acquiring land. That land will be used for set apart Torah based communities, for us to grow our own food, for us to herd our own cattle, for us to make our own clothing, for us to homeschool, for us to have home businesses, many different things that will truly cause our people to be set apart, self-sustained. All these things we're doing with the Hebrews for Excellence and Exodus campaign. I thank all of you who have already been supporting uh, anybody else who wants to support and wants to join us and actually have boots on the ground to do work with us whenever we travel from city to city. You can find my email in the description box underneath this video. Just reach out to me and we'll talk about ways that we can work together to serve our people and to advance the kingdom. For brothers and sisters who are interested in giving a monetary donation, I will also put a link in the description box underneath this video on how you can donate monetary funds to the Hebrews for Excellence in Exodus campaign. Other than that, you guys can support just by listening to these videos, sharing these videos. I appreciate any support that you can bring. I will support you as well. Let's continue on and endure to the end with victory, success, and destiny. And never, ever forget the power of that blood to live for the most high, kill for the most high, and die for the most high. Hallelujah. That blood and love is inseparable. Shalom.